You kept everything low profile. I, I don't, I don't love it. I don't love it. I hate some people, Achi. Well, firstly, Achi, I know one should want to be like me because everyone thinks about the issues as why am I, why do I have to do it? Mm. Yeah, there's so many do it, someone else do it. Okay. That's that's how everyone thinks, right? Mm -hmm. Now the problem is if everyone thinks like that, the job doesn't get done. They mock it and they make money out of mocking. It. If they don't care. I couldn't care less about making them care. Everyone, every single person who produces content now, no matter how bad the content is, will influence people. Um, I do hurt others. I do hurt. <laughs> I do hurt others all the time. Okay. Spend too much time unless I feel the need. I feel a need to put out a refutation video to expose one of these punks. I'll put a video out. Don't try to shut my channel down. Brother Fari, thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks for having this me. week uh, for the Righteous Rich podcast. You were like, yani, you kept everything low profile. Yani, if I if you if I if I remember, you were into mass media, university, and so many uh, academic studies. And you for a decade maybe you were completely uh, into studies, but you were working behind the scene or kind of hidden that time also very much without showing your face mm. but later on uh, what happened well, all of a sudden you came out and opened up and what's the reason well I was put in a situation that forced me to come out and uh, mashallah I'm just, I'm just speaking about um, <clears throat> the English speaking world the Arabic speaking world as well there are a lot of people mashallah that are so much more qualified than I am to speak about religious matters and to defend Islam. However, um, I saw a gap that needed to be filled. Unfortunately, in some aspects that have to do with Islamic history and some matters that have to do with defending the deen, there are people, again, that are more qualified than me that are not taking the necessary step of putting that information forward um, through video. Mm. So that was the main reason um, I'm doing this. That's, that's the main reason behind the channel. Um, even before that, um, I, I just saw the need and and uh, that's why I'm here. Yeah. I start, started off slow, started off slow. First of all, it was mainly audio and mm -hmm. then uh, um, video with a very dark light. <laughs> <laughs> and then all of a sudden, um, uh, there was someone I was making a video about who was making fun of that. And he was like, what's this guy? I'll, I'll get to that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm interested. I, I want yeah. to know about it. But uh, see, debate and dialogue, two different things. If you can explain a bit about that and uh, which one you prefer most. Well, dialogue, of course, is best. Hmm. Getting your ideas across to someone, especially if someone you care about, that's always best, meaningful dialogue. But unfortunately, um, YouTube, it's a battlefield. It's a battlefield where everyone is point scoring, everyone is trying to make the other person look as bad as possible. And in situations like that, you're dragged to any debate or you're dragged into a vicious cycle of refutations. Mm. That's just mm. the reality of the battlefield. Mm. You know, there, there is no yes. There are some channels, mashallah, like uh, the Thought Adventure, pod, the Thought Adventure podcast, where they have meaningful dialogue, and you see the benefits of it. You see people on those shows um, accepting the ideas that are being uh, shared and and changing their world views from that meaningful dialogue, which is great. If you conduct in the right way, of course, because that's a that's a problem we see. If somebody is opening up for the dialogue or the debate, if somebody is not really doing it properly, then it is messing up the person who is watching it. Of course. So because you are you are really getting into you know a thing which needs skills, yeah. right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And the, unfortunately, um, the, there are issues with the Dawah scene. Mm. Um, there are a lot of people that struggle with their ego. Yeah. And yeah, may Allah make me not one of those people and then keep me away from that. And sometimes sometimes it's tough. You see um, the positive uh, comments and, and the appreciation and the love, which is very different, very different from what I'm used to. Uh, as, as you've mentioned, I, I was uh, low profile for a very long time. You barely get any appreciation. And you do the work, yeah. 
because you know yeah, this is lillah yeah. this is not for anyone else it's not for the people when you get someone saying oh this is very good I appreciate this oh wow someone likes this Yes. I know this one brother, mashallah. Uh, he writes these really lengthy articles, very long. Uh, he, if you scroll down, you're tired. You mm. know, your, your, your finger, your index finger is tired from scrolling down because they're so long. And deep down, I know that not many people read this stuff. Barely anyone reads this stuff. I'm in the same field. I don't read this stuff. It's just too long. Mm. But at the same time, you know his niyyah, inshallah. This is good niyyah. It's not for people, right? It's not for praise. I mean, of course it's for people, it's for people to benefit, but it's not for praise, it's not for his ego. So if, if I uh, ask about the skills, one should have even basic skills to watch out these programs, especially dialogue and debate. What are the skills you prefer? Someone should have it. You mean the people that are producing content about? Producing content plus who is watching us. Because if, if, if the person who is uh, watching doesn't know how to comprehend, <clears throat> Yeah, you can't, you can't control people. Yeah. People will watch this stuff. Twelve-year-olds, Zachi, twelve-year-olds, and and they're getting affected by everything they see. And uh, it's a minority. There aren't too many twelve-year-olds watching this type of content. But you know, Alhamdulillah, I think people with time, the more material they consume, the more they are able to determine what's a good argument and what's a bad argument. Is this being presented correctly? Is this being presented unfairly? Is this person straw manning his opponent? With time, inshallah. But unfortunately, most of us, we jump into this, whether we're content producers or we're just viewers, we jump into this not knowing mm. what the heck is going on. Mm. And for the vast majority of us, me included, when I started out, the last thing you hear is the correct opinion, simply because it's the last thing that you hear. Still undeveloped with time it's like any journalism and uh, even uh, any because you're getting into judge judgment level and you start judging explain please explain about how it's like journalism i'm curious i'm not that much uh, into it but uh, i think that is a method where you get into comprehension methods where you use all the why's and what's all the questions and plus also know how how did you really get this news and right. You get the proper facts. It's it's a distinction you create with the facts and the opinion, and you right. beat the opinion, which which is not uh, at all uh, real. Right. You just created, and you ju you are making a judgment out there, and so many opinions out there. You know. So I think uh, that's how you're checking out your work content, what what you're releasing. Of course, yeah, of course. Um, uh, it's important to not produce content that I'm not sure of, that I'm not certain of that I'm doubtful of. And mm -hmm. unfortunately, I see some other content creators putting out content that's simply... Um, not even sure about it. Yeah, they're not sure. Uh, sometimes, uh, I, can't say, I can't say people are putting out... Well, actually, yes. Actually, yes. Um, I've seen people put out content that is clearly false, that they most likely don't even believe in. Yeah. You know, especially like uh, reformist, uh, reformist orientalists, they will put out content, crazy content. I was just watching a clip today of someone saying, the Quran came before Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Mm. <laughs> I think the Muslim who watches this is like, oh wow, this is how bad they are. This mm. is the type of arguments that they're using. And I think sometimes when such arguments are made, it gives the, Muth the Muslim more faith in traditional Islam. Yeah. It's crazy ideas, yeah. Mm. Or the Quran was written a hundred years after the Prophet. You know, <laughs> yeah, it's such stuff like that. Are you helping people with the distinguishing things uh, when you are producing content, or are you influencing people to come to your side or choose your side? Help them distinguish things apart from produ producing content. I just produce content, Akhi. Um, I've never done anything on um, how to distinguish truth from falsehood. I just put out. I just put out content. Mm. I don't think I've ever done anything else apart from that. So, uh, made a few videos talking about Ilm al-Hadith in passing. Mm. I've never gotten into um, mm. doing something detailed about Ilm al-Hadith. But it is important. It is important, I guess. And uh, how are you influencing? Influencing them to ch uh, choose your side? or? Well, yeah, everyone, every single person who produces content, now, no matter how bad the content is, will influence people to choose their side, right? No matter how bad, no matter how uh, false and dishonest and, and egotistical and vile or 
smart and truthful and, and good clean content and, and uh, academic content, uh, objective content, no matter what you put out, you're going to influence someone. So yes, I am influencing people. <laughs> Don't choose your side. <laughs> so everyone's influencing someone, right? So why did you choose uh, debunking reputation and kind of exposing online uh, and maintaining your values, not hurting yourself and others? Um, I do hurt others. Yeah, I do yeah. hurt. I do hurt others all the time. Okay. Yeah, my opponents who lie about Islam, mm -hmm. I I, uh, yeah, I, mock, sure. I ridicule them. Yeah. I ridicule them uh, all the time. So th they're the only people that are being hurt directly. Mm -hmm. And alhamdulillah, I've hurt their credibility. It's mm -hmm. something that I feel like I do a good job of, hurting the credibility of other people that attack the deen. Alhamdulillah. Um, indirectly, their fans get hurt. Mm -hmm. that, that also happens. Yeah. But it's it's not my intention to hurt their fans. Uh, I just want their fans to be aware of who you are being influenced by. Yeah, make sure what they're watching. And they, I think uh, the person who is watching, they should be able to any differentiate what's happening, distinguish things. Otherwise, any you you are watching anybody nowadays. So can can anybody learn and go through uh, these kind of content and become like you and produce such content and do something like you? And do they need any qualification or do they need to learn something academically? And they should be really having some kind of knowledge on this. Well, firstly, yeah, no one should want to be like me. Um, that's the first thing. Um, but to produce content is extremely easy. To produce content is very easy. Um, I even have a video in which I show my setup, which is a laptop, a webcam, um, headphones that cost two pounds or three dollars, that's it. Hmm. And uh, recently I bought a couple of lights which cost peanuts, um, nothing advanced. Hmm. And that, that's for producing content. When it comes to knowledge, I just uh, I suggest reading up and learning what you're interested in. That's it. Um, I didn't necessarily feel a need to get into this and then I said okay now I need to learn about this that's it's, a lot of it was ready mm. a lot of it was ready alhamdulillah mm. um, and I always suggest that people that want to get into a specific field in Islam to just read casually read a lot but read casually in the sense that don't push yourself oh I need to force myself to read this book and then that book and then that book and then that just read casually you have naturally when you read you're gonna um, have questions, you go to specialists in that field and you ask those people and you read some more, Natu it's going to happen naturally. Never force it because when you force it, the, inf the information just falls out of your head. Mm. You're unable to contain it. Um, and, you know, it's like school, right? When you're forced to learn information in school, you forget that information. It's different than when you're actually learning something that you really want to get into and you want to benefit yourself from, right? Yeah. So uh, this stuff, this media related stuff, yeah. are you forcing yourself or are you just, oh, what about this? I'm looking into this. And you're, mm -hmm. you're interested yourself, right? Yeah. Yeah. Why youth is so frustrated and isolated, uh, you know, from the faith and tradition and uh, themselves and they want to be alone. And <clears throat> what do you think? What is the reason? They want to be alone. What do you mean they want to be alone? S staying away from people who are religious and into faith too much and just don't want to. You remember we used to talk like why youth is getting so apathy, so much of apathy in there. Mm. They have lost interest mm. and they don't have visions and no, I know a lot of procrastination, laziness is mm. going on. And that is one thing. But there are people who are interested, but they, they are not able to get the access and they are staying away from uh, you know, people who are uh, into too much into religious thing, and in fact, I I feel like don't you think it's uh, it's that's the reason we are having the crisis today? You can't help them, or I mean, I'm sure some people can. I'm sure some people um, have the ability to ha to get the youth to be more interested in the deen. I'm sure, but uh, but it's again passive. 
it's I'm kind of about, they are not into social they are not into social groups not mm-hmm. real it's like they are passive taking information online that's all right and uh, even then from i mean the information that they're uh, mm. uh, getting you mean religious or non-religious information both, both. so people that are apathetic towards religion in general there are many people alhamdulillah that are that do da'wah to them M- me personally it's not my thing um, I've shared this story before. I was in uh, a masjid and uh, Sheikh, he came up with this very interesting idea. He said, I'm going to make a competition. And basically, we're gathering donations for this competition. So whoever can donate, please donate. So I, I went up to him. I was like, mashallah, great idea. And, and the competition is an aqidah competition where there's going to be a small book that you're going to read. And you're going to have to extract matters that have to do with your ideology from that book. And then you're going to solve the questions that are being posed forward. And this will help people. This will help young Muslims learn about their deen, learn about their ideology. Yeah, it's a good idea, yeah? Mm. Yeah, and I was, I was like, mashallah. And I went up to him. I thanked him for it. I was like, I like this. Mm. And then I went back home. Mm. And I started to think about it for a bit. And I thought to myself, so the youth need a competition in which they're going to get money in order to care about learning their deen? <laughs> Don't you? I mean, and how much is it? It's not like any tens of thousands of dollars or what. No, it's, it's yeah, peanuts, right? Mm. Some peanuts. It's, um, maximum. I think like top, top prize would be like $100 or something like that. And people are going to learn their deen. They're going to learn their With that aqidah. intention. For a hundred dollars, this is—I didn't like this, and I re, and I, I felt this is this is really pathetic. Mm. Unfortunately, I felt this is pathetic, and I dislike I dislike any. Well, I, I started to dislike all types of competitions in which you're being awarded a monetary prize for memorizing Quran, for learning Aqidah, for memorizing a Hadith, etc. Because this should be. This should be for yourself. It shouldn't be for money. Yeah. Because so. self-concept is like a heavily dependent on your behavior. If you are not improving yourself, yani, it's a point. Yani, your behavior also will show it. That's how I think. Uh, the question, I, I, in the end, I ask you also about, like, yani, do you think that is a crisis? Of that's course. A, that's the reason we have crisis. Yeah. So, so uh, this takes me back to the whole issue or we mentioned apathy, the apathy of the youth, right? Mm. Um, if they don't care, I couldn't care less about making them care. Okay? Yeah. I appreciate those that do. Mm. There are some people that do focus on that mm. and they try to get more people to attach themselves to the deen. I, I really respect that. But for that person that at this moment doesn't care, I don't care about them. Yeah. That's just how I feel. It may be cruel, it may be... Um, insensitive but at the moment that's how i feel why there is suppression uh, in being you know like skeptical or doubtful or thinking for themselves one on other, one side we discuss something related to apathy there are people there are young buddies uh, who are thinking who are doubtful mm. or skeptical also so but for that there is kind of suppression like mm. e- even if i tell like scholars maybe or or knowledgeable, they say, don't go too much on that, or don't think so much. You should not have doubts. Right. You should not do this. You should right. not do that. Right. So that is kind of you know suppression. You are trying to uh, stop them, and right. they don't want to uh, get into something which is uh, beneficial. <clears throat> yeah, I, I feel like Wallahu alam. Sometimes when if it's a specific question being posed, yeah, Sheikh, what about this specific matter? And the Sheikh says. Don't look into that. I feel like, you know, have faith. I think this is a problem. If it's yeah. a specific, it's a specific question, yeah. because it suggests that he's not he's not sure himself mm. of, of the answer, right? Mm. Um, but generally, I, I don't have an issue generally with this advice, with the advice of learn your deen instead of learning about arguments against your deen, mm. right? Mm. Because that's what because we're the youth, even even adults. I want to see what others say against my deen, to see if I'm following something based on you know, purely faith or is it based on evidence. I want to test my faith. Right? This is 
uh, a common theme that we find. And uh, when this is being done without proper knowledge, without learning your deen first, it's going to be an issue, naturally. Mm. So I understand the sheikh that says, yeah, learn your deen first. I, I appreciate that, except when it's a specific question. When a specific question comes, the sheikh needs to provide an answer, a clear answer. If he doesn't know, he should research it, and then he should, he should say, come back to me tomorrow, tomorrow, and he gives the answer to the, the, the person who's asking tomorrow, and he says, listen, I gave you the answer, but now you have to learn. Learn about the subject, learn about these matters, learn about your foundations, that's it. I think this is a balanced approach. So the, the highest function of soul is to you know, have a perception, perception of truth. And I think, you, uh, for me, I believe you have found it and you are certain about it. Uh, so how did you find it and uh, who influenced you? Uh, this, this is something that happened in college when I was around 20. And um, I went to, well, even before that, there was, there was a brother who was very, very well-read, extremely, extremely well-read, and uh, unfortunately, he uh, stopped being a religious person, and he started mm. to um, get into the pop culture, and he started to sing, mm -hmm. okay, and uh, unfortunately, um, well, well, fortunately, alhamdulillah, if you were to sit with him and talk religion, he'd still be able to talk religion, right, but he looks like someone who is not really into that stuff. But he will talk sources, he knows, he'll mention names of ulama, and he'll reference them properly, mm. and you'll be like, oh, wow, you know, this guy who looks like someone who, who he actually became a, a singer in a band. Mm. Okay. Mm. Um, but he, he speaks deen with knowledge, right? So it was surprising. Um, and when, I, when, when he'd speak about anything, he would break it down um, very in a very um, in a very very smart way, and uh, he'd break everything down. I'd say a joke, and he would say, "Oh, you know why that's funny? Because of your delivery, your timing, and and <laughs> really? your facial expressions." I'm like, "Ajib, oh, you know this is uh, where did you learn this?" He's like, "Oh, I was reading a book," oh. and um, he's like, "Do you know how I became a singer?" And he's like, I, "I actually learned from reading a book." I was like, "Ajib, oh, everything, everything this guy was doing in his life was based on something that he read, usually a book." Right, and uh, and that had an effect on me. That had an effect on me. And uh, I remember uh, when he was leaving college, um, he uh, he parked his car in front of the dorms, opened up the trunk, and it was filled with religious books. And me and a friend, he, he invited me and a friend, and he said, "Take whatever you like, because I'm no longer interested in religious books, unfortunately." So we took, we took those books and we benefited from them, inshallah. Um, I'm trying to remember which ones I read. I think I, think I read some of Ibn Qayyim's uh, books that he had in, in that trunk. Um, uh, and after that, I started to become like, more interested in reading because mm -hmm. of his influence. What was the age? He was uh, 22 at the time. I was so maybe- You was your time. Yeah, I was 21. Was I think it's 20, 21. And that's how I started. And then I went to, I wanted to learn more about Aqidah. I was, I was Aqidah stuff. And I went to a bookstore and I hear about the Aqidah Tahawiyah. Everyone's saying Tahawiyah, Tahawiyah, mm -hmm. high level, mm -hmm. you know. So the sheikh, uh, the, the guy who works at the bookstore, he gives me a copy of Aqidah Tahawiyah. I ask him for it. He opens up to a random section. He's like, here you go. But before you buy it, can you read this? I was like, okay. He's like, you understand? I was like, I have no idea what this is saying. <laughs> so he's like, okay. And he gives me al-aqid al-wasatiyya. Oh, okay. like, is your level. Start now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's how. Mashallah. Yeah, so that's, at least someone in the shop is like, you know, how to find out, yeah, yeah. Very good, bro. It's very good. Huh. That guy, he, he helped me a lot, man. He helped really? me a lot, yeah. That, that, that one thing, because yeah, if I, maybe if I bought this book, I would have, I mean, al-tahawiyya, maybe I would have said, al-aqid <laughs> Why am I going to waste my time with Aqidah, Aqidah stuff? They you gave me something. Tia, how many are reading this much? Uh, it was, it was, uh, yeah, the volume was about like this thick. Because yes. um, with com commentary, of course. Um, Tahawiyah, if I recall correctly, it was two volumes and they're both like 
big ones. Yeah. So that influenced me a lot. And then mm. I was I was reading and I was really benefiting from it. And then I was speaking to a friend from college, um, his Moroccan brother who lived in Saudi. And I was like, Ahi, do you know this, this, this? You know, do you know that Allah does this, this, and, and is this, this? And I, I'd speak about like the nature of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I was like, do you know this is how it is? He was like, yeah, we learned that in high school. I was like, what? And, you know, he, he lived in Riyadh. Mm. In Riyadh, in Saudi, yeah. they teach you this stuff in school. Okay? Mm. But I didn't learn this stuff in school. I had to learn it when I was in college from, from my own readings. Yeah. So I learned it quite late compared to him. But yeah, it, it, is, uh, it is a na'mah. It is a na'mah for you to learn this stuff. And it's also a na'mah. I mean, it's a, learn, it's a na'mah to learn it at school. It's also a na'mah to learn it no, after. When it is right time. Yeah, and appreciate it more. You appreciate it more because I was, yeah. I was never taught this when I was young. Mm. So that, that's that's what brought me into It's just it. because of the books, reading habits. and It's that guy's influence, first of all, because he was just an avid reader of everything. You know, you know, and everything, everything, everything. So I have to read this because you quoted this recently, I think. So many messed up folks are out there, but if you hate too many of them, you will run out of their head. <laughs> <laughs> Save your hatred for those who deserve the most, Yannick. Yes. So you are asking for hatred, man. You have to, Yaki. You have to hate why, some people. Why like that, Yannick? You have to hate some people, Yaki. How can you not hate some people? Mm. Some people are so hate hateable. Don't you? Don't you feel the same way? No. Uh, they can, there, there can be politicians. Yeah. Maybe politicians. Maybe religious uh, leaders or religious people. Maybe. Um, uh, punks, you know, maybe some punks, uh, maybe uh, yeah, 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 heretics, many people that that you that you just hate. Hate is a natural emotion. The Muslims hated the Kuffar mm. in Mecca, mm. right? They hated mm. Quraysh, and Rasulullah made a dua against some of them, mm. and he made dua for some of them, right? So. Uh, so you you are really giving a hint for this that who are mostly into like mercy be merciful you have to be very nice and, but man Allah is uh, very strong on the other side also yeah. he, he knows how to like he punishes also so that thing do, nobody wants to talk mm. what do you yeah. think about that Yanni? yeah do you do you do you talk both sides or just like Actually, there's an issue because today people feel that there are only three people that will go to hell, mm, okay? Mm. Uh, Pharaoh, Abu Lahab, and Iblis. <laughs> Everyone else is saved. You know, there's there's this, uh, no one says this, yeah, yeah, but this yeah. is how you feel from yeah, the way people the way, talk. Uh, people are behaving, yeah. Yeah, yeah the, the worst people today, people that lie about Islam, that yani, yani, mock Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that mock the Prophet peace be upon him. And not only that, not because they feel the need to mock or to challenge ideas. La 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 la. They mock it and they make money out mm. of mocking it. Mm. Okay, imagine someone mocking Allah to make money. Yeah. And what a what a vile person. Yeah. And and who what what is this doing? It's hurting, yani, the Muslims. It's just to make the Muslims angry, and to make those that hate Islam laugh. And they're making money out of this, right? Mm. And and yet you will still find people saying, "Oh yeah, you know, he's just he's just ignorant." I, 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 inshallah, yeah, inshallah, this guy. Yeah, I I feel some khair in him. I know there's some khair. Actually, there's khair in everyone. Mm. There's khair in everyone. Mm. The, the, think of the, the worst people mm. in in the history of man, and you will find them doing some good. There's always some good in those who are who are evil. Yeah. So I don't see that as a reason to hold that hate and, and keep it in. That hate should be there. It's natural. It's human nature. And we're being affected by this. I don't know what it is. It's hippie culture. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I feel that you feel the same way that I feel. I feel that. Yeah. About the way the way you ask the question. Yeah. You feel that the, there's an issue. There's an issue with this um, this this uh, extra husnavan for everyone. Yeah. 
you cannot re- really uh, do that much and and i'm um, these days i'm really serious also yani i take my precautions i take everything i make sure i sign contract or anything if i'm dealing if it is dealing matters but uh, same time uh, when it comes to husn also there is limitations i want to do it every time as a person i love you, uh, i love her as a person but when it comes to deal i have to make sure that okay there is some kind of limitations so i think yeah yeah who is conscious has to has to be taking care of these things but still when you say hatred it's emotion right and it's a low, low lower level emotion but it's is it good for us to have it's a natural it's just natural mm. it's natural so it's openly you're talking about that you know about the hatred don't you think now you are kind of influencer man <laughs> people are like following you well every, everyone feels it that mm. everyone feels it doesn't matter what they say mm. right so what are the biggest uh, projects you have in your pipeline what are your plans yani just to know um i've been doing less videos i've mm. been doing a lot less well i mean uh, i've been i've just released the uh, the proofs of profit series 29 videos alhamdulillah yeah. they're all very short um 2 3 4 minutes um and i think that's good i think that's what's needed um and and yes i haven't done too many videos because i feel like i don't want to make videos just because let's put some content out mm. for the algorithm uh, yeah. i don't care i don't care um i just want to put content out if i feel strongly about a specific subject yeah or if it's someone that needs to definitely be put in their place mm. i will go out of my way and make a video but i don't want to make a video for the sake of making a video too many i've done too many videos like that yeah mm. so okay so the the thing which you are doing do you love the work or are you doing it because there is a need yeah i don't i don't love it i don't love it mm. um i I've, a lot of times i feel it's just a task that i need to just finish right you just need to do it yeah. yeah but but i'd go crazy if i'm if i'm not having fun with it right mm. so i try to make it funny mm. sometimes especially my earlier clips uh, in which i'm refuting specific islamophobes i try to keep it funny for my own entertainment you know <laughs> um, and alhamdulillah people enjoy it mm. uh, and just not too long ago i was watching a clip i made you know it came up and i was like yeah let me just watch this And, oh yeah I actually was researching a subject I was like let me see what I said about the subject mm-hmm. you know I typed it in came up I watched it I was laughing I was like mashallah this is funny yeah so so I tried to make it fun for myself because I personally dislike making videos uh, alhamdulillah um uh, brother guga has been helping me out with uh, Who's editing brother guga brother guga yeah you don't know guga bites yeah you have to know guga bites bro you're looking for an editor <laughs> Guga cuz he's going to get in touch with you. <laughs> he helped me out okay. man. He helped me out because I was I was uh, I was dying yakhi. I was di- I couldn't I was like how am I going to edit all these videos bro. So alhamdulillah very very beneficial um helped me out a lot. Mm. And when you have someone to help you out with stuff it makes life easier. Sometimes yeah. it's people help you out with writing some well not me but like yani I've helped other people out with writing um mm. someone helping you out with editing um some helping you out with research it helps you have a team no but yeah ni guga you know <laughs> guga's my team yeah if, uh, okay. yeah okay great so i think overall you have covered with what you do yani but like yani uh, if there is anything i can remember as uh, about the previous team the one which you used to have the sunna defend or the one which you used to have the website what about those things you still do it or no um they're they're doing they're they're doing a good job um mm-hmm. they're doing their own thing and uh, they're doing great they're doing great but um, i've shifted from that and um, broader one broader perspective yes pretty much uh, focusing on um anti-islam content um uh, that was how it started that's how it, again it's the need that made me do Looking it. Looking at the need, yeah. Yeah. And um I I was I was scrolling through uh, an Islamophobe's channel and he had so many videos against Islam, no refutations. Mm. Akhi, can you imagine this, man? Um I would look up refutations and the people refuting that content sometimes were kids, 
because they're like, no one's doing anything. Mm. So some kids were stepping up, which is great, mashallah. Respect, ya khi. And the du'at, why weren't they doing it? Mm. And I was, I was like, you know, here's the thing. Because everyone thinks about the issues as, um, why am I, why do I have to do it? Mm. Yeah, there's so many du'at, someone else do it. Okay. That's, that's how everyone thinks, right? Mm. Now mm. the problem is, if everyone thinks like that, the job doesn't get done. Yeah. So yeah, he, these, these young guys were doing the work. And sometimes it was okay. Sometimes it was, it was bad. Yeah. Uh, I don't think it was dangerous for them. But some of the... the Someone who is watching if there is no, no proper facts. Of course. Of course. That's going to be an issue then. Of course. So um, I was like, okay. Uh, so back at the time, I, I talked to a Bosnian brother called Emin. I was like, listen, Emin, we're going to do this. And actually, we pumped out like 50 videos in like yeah. two months. Mm. You know, just pumping out every day a video, every day a video. Until the end. And, and the, the Islamophobe that we were refuting, he, he, he didn't respond to a single thing. Oh. He didn't respond to a single thing. Of course, our channel's small. Mm. You know, that, that's one thing. But I'm, I'm sure yeah, he did realize that this is going to result in a back and forth. And it's not going to be a good look for him. Mm. Mm. He did eventually respond to one video okay. a year later. Huh. One year later, respond to one video out of 50. Mm. One video. Mm. After he responded to that video, within 24 hours, I put my response up. Yeah, yeah I mean, you know, you need a year to respond, I'll respond in a day. That's how I treat these things. Sometimes it's not even, this is alhamdulillah, it's, it's not for me. It's not for me. Um, but I've actually seen someone, I, I, I probably, it probably was one of Emin's videos, wallahu alam. There's one guy came back to Islam from these videos, these video refutations. Mm -hmm. Now, refutation videos don't call you to Islam, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. The refutation videos are not, this is why Islam is correct. You don't have that in refutation videos. Refutation videos is, okay, so you're saying Islam is false because of this, you're incorrect because of, you know, ABC, right? Mm -hmm. These are refutation videos. But someone came to Islam from watching a refutation video. Okay, it was an ex, it was an ex-Muslim. He left Islam because of an Islamophobe. Watched a refutation video and came back to Islam. Interesting. Yeah, and do you know what he said? He said there's a response. <laughs> <laughs> Bas. Yeah. That was it. When when there's no content out there, when no one's producing refutations, people assume that there's no answer. Yeah. That's it. And they Unfortunately, just, they become doubtful. Then, yeah, that's where the doubt and yeah. self-doubt and make them stay away. Yeah. So, uh, two things. Firstly, I uh, wanted to know, like, is there anything which people have done it before? The same refutation. I know uh, there is, but if you can share some of the refutations done, so so some of the guys before. Yeah. So the the thing is, what I've seen is most of the refutation content online or on youtube is on speaker's corner or in speaker's corner right the problem is these refutations are not directed mm -hmm. at the uh those specific videos by that are made by islamophobes mm -hmm. so uh, i was speaking to brother mansoor from uh, speaker's corner just recently um from that wise that wise channel and he's got this uh, wonderful video where he's discussing with um, some people about, so he was speaking about Surah Tariq, and there's a verse that, that Islamophobes use, and critics of Islam use. Um, of course, I have to differentiate between the two. Not every critic of Islam is an Islamophobe, but both of them do use this argument, which is basically referring to um, where, where does semen come from? Mm. In, in, in the Quran, it speaks about where semen comes from. Mm or not semen, but where the human comes from. It's, it's a very interesting discussion. And he argues this um, why, you know, in speaker's corner with one or two people. The problem is, Akhi, no, it's, it's a wonderful argument. Mm -hmm. he, he puts it really well. But the problem is every week there's like 10 hours of speaker's content video coming out. Mm -hmm. The title of the video has nothing to do with the argument. If you are someone who's having doubt because of the argument, 
and you type in the keywords, okay, sperm from the back bones and the ribs, for example, you know, or something mm. like that, mm. it won't show up in the results. Yeah. Because the, the title of his video is something else completely. Mm. So Alhamdulillah, I spoke to him about this recently. I was like, you need to make a video specifically about this and you have to have the title. He's like, yeah, definitely. And yani, uh, he will do it and, uh, and, and that's great and that's what we need. Um, and may Allah bless him. And mashallah, he, he did a great job with the argument itself and, and explaining it, but it's just the issue of the title of the video. Really? Huh? So, so speakers, the folks of Speakers Corner are doing a good job, but it's bad titles. Sometimes mm. it's, you know, uh, the nature of speakers corner, everyone's speaking above each other and it's, mm. it's different than when I'm looking at the screen and I'm speaking to you, my audience, mm. and I'm able to um, share my views without someone shouting over me. Yeah, not allowing you to talk, Kenny. I've seen one of the videos when you were talking to right. them. Right. It's like, let's decide here, two minutes or two minutes. Right. <laughs> what? Man, nobody's here to decide who is organizing this. I'm right. like, you're standing, what to do? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> like, right, okay, right, this right. is two, three years back. Right, right. Right. It was like, I have, uh, before, you know, coming here and planning uh, to sit with you and talk with you, I watched uh, videos. There are many people who really uh, uh, don't like any, uh, to have somebody exposing somebody you know, who has done like maybe 99% good work, but maybe 1%, mm. some bad work. Mm. And when you expose... Give me an the, example. Uh, let's say I don't want to or get into problem, but one of the uh, Sheikh you have uh, exposed. Who is he? <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah uh, Sheikh Yasir Khadir. Uh, Sheikh, yani. Yani, he's a Sheikh for many, right? Uh, yeah. yeah, Yasir Khadir has a lot of issues. Well, I could not watch uh, Yasir uh, Khadir's reputations uh, or... Uh, that's so, so I'm not going to speak about some of his issues, um, and a lot of them have been uh, debunked recently. Mm. Um, a lot well, of you only you or somebody else. Also. A lot of mashayikh, a lot mm. of in, in the English-speaking world. The, when he started speaking about the shirk issue, mm. we were speaking about these matters. Six, seven videos, all mm. at the same time. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's not me, Akhi. I didn't even make a single video about that. Okay. So they've been doing this, and they've, the people are becoming vocal uh, mm. because they, they've noticed that he's been crossing the line about some specific matters. Mm. I think these guys were already doing it. You came like any, from nowhere, and now I see that people, when they are talking or writing, they write Hamza Zotis and Farid response, and you are also like in the top five. Um, this is Yaqi Abtila. This is Abtila. Yani, it's not something. <laughs> I'm. I'm not happy to be here. Okay. Um, it is what it is. Uh, when I started the channel, and okay, and it's, it's getting shared and all that. You know, I'm like, okay, this is nice. But at the same time, I I, I don't want that attention. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't, I don't I don't really want that attention. Um, fa, yani, alhamdulillah, kulli hal. Um, I, I appreciate. I appreciate one thing, which is the ability to get my voice across. Mm. I appreciate that. Um, I, I uh, that, that is a na'mah. That is a na'mah. But um, too much attention is, is not good for the nafs. It's not, it's not good for the ego. Um, and it's it's hurt people. Akhi. It's destroyed people. Yeah. It's something that's destroyed people. Fa, yani, may Allah keep me away from this. Again, I'm asking you, did anybody do it before? Right. You, you, you want the new generation guys? Well, no, like no. I'm, to I'm talking with the uh, century uh, before, the, even oh, centuries. Oh, you yeah. want centuries ago? Yeah. Mashallah, yeah. so much, man, so much. Yeah, uh, someone who who has influenced every everyone, like Ibn Taymiyyah. Mm -hmm. Ibn Taymiyyah was king of refutations. Mashallah, writing refutations from prison. Yeah, you know, this, yeah. this is next level. But nobody knows, right? Nah, people know, people know about Ibn Taymiyyah and his refutations, but a lot of it has been translated, not translated into English. Yeah, that's the issue. That's the issue. But uh, a lot of the du'at are bringing some of this stuff out, right? Mm. So uh, um, his refutations against uh, Christianity, for example, mm. that's being brought forward. Minhaj al-Sunnah, in which he's uh, refuting Ibn Qahar al-Hilli. This is, uh, I think some of it may have been translated into English, not the full thing. You know? The issue is, when it's these works, they're quite large. So finding translators is gonna take some time. And uh, by the time they've translated the whole thing, it's going to be, I don't know, five, six years. You've already learned the, the Arabic language if you tried to uh -huh. learn. That's a good way to learn Arabic because have, have you tried any uh, translation work, Annie? Say again. Have you done any translation for anybody? No, any? no. 
you just read and la, la, okay. I, I, I don't, go directly I, to the videos. If I translate for people, then they're, they're, it's going to take away the motivation from learning the language. Mm. Akhi, you learn Arabic. You yeah. learn Arabic for yeah. one reason, Akhi. Yeah. You learn Arabic. Well, of course, there are many reasons. But the main reason you learn Arabic Quran, yeah. is to appreciate the Quran. Yes. Not to know the meaning. Yes. Not to know the meaning of the Quran. But to appreciate. Because, Akhi, a lot of the meaning of the Quran, you can learn through a translation. Hmm. A lot of it is available yeah. through the translation. But the eloquence no. is, cannot be translated. And you learn the Quran just to enjoy, Akhi. Just to enjoy the Quran. Okay. Now, for the youth, helping them, yani, learn Deen, what are you doing? Yani? Akhi, alhamdulillah, in regards to that last series, Proofs of Prophethood, I'm very satisfied, Akhi. Yeah. I'm very satisfied because YouTube, inshallah, unless my channel gets shut down, don't try to shut my channel down. Unless that happens, it's it's there, it's there. And and if anyone says, how why should I believe in Islam? Send the link. If anyone says I have doubts in Islam, send the link. Mm. And the the arguments. Have you seen the series or not really? Not yet. I think you just posted and yeah. that is what I know. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's twenty nine episodes. Yeah. It's Al Qadi Abdul Jabbar's arguments for Islam. It's two volumes, but I've shortened it into 29 short videos, very short videos. You can watch the whole thing in a few hours, and two hours maybe. And these are arguments that are based on the intellect. It's beautiful. They're beautiful, inshallah. And uh, um, yeah, any other du'at found it beneficial. And uh, I, feel, I feel like I don't need to push to put content out mm. on a regular basis now that this thing is out. This thing is out, خلاص, yeah, yeah. I don't want to spend too much time unless I feel the need. I feel a need to put out a refutation video to expose one of these punks, I'll put a video out. But apart from that, I'm okay. happy. With that, we conclude, but I have a few rapid questions. Uh-oh. Uh, so that, uh, that that's it a, should be quick, fast. That's, that's always know. an there issue. Is, there is no time for you to think much. It should be like one word or within five words. Okay. Uh, where it's it's something related to you and Shama. It will be quick. I, okay. Okay. So, uh, what is a missing childhood moment for you? Missing childhood moment? Yes. What do you mean? Uh, a childhood moment I miss? Yeah. Um... Akhiya, this is taking me too long. Akhiya, I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. Um, going to Dairy Queen with my parents. You like Dairy Queen, okay. <laughs> when I was young. When uh -huh. I was young, I love Dairy Queen. The book which you would like to recommend it to someone in 2021. Subject? Uh, other than religious book. I don't read much, Akhi. I don't re read much that's not religious. Really? Yeah. So, anything religious other than Quran and Hadith? Um, 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 uh, that book by uh, Ahmed Bassam Sa'i. Uh, it's called, I think it's called The Miracle. If I'm, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's called The Miracle. Um, it's basically a book where he examines um, the uh, the eloquence of the Quran and he explains how the speech of the Quran is different than any other type of speech like the sentence structure is different mm. you know if you take that sentence structure and you put words that are that you use today mm -hmm. it's not gonna it's not gonna flow mm -hmm. but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought this sentence structure and it flows it's mm. a very interesting book. It's uh, some some books they have written like it's organized and everything is organized. The Quran is also completely organized. If it starts, it ends also. There is some kind of synchronicity and it's amazing. Yeah. So, what is the biggest regret in your life? Um, that's a bit personal. Uh, how about second biggest regret? Okay. Going to school. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, the future of Middle East. Um, let's 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 hope we uh, let, let's hope that things stay stable. Inshallah, um, I'm I'm somewhat optimistic about it just being stable. Inshallah. So, biggest motivation? Death. I'll give you the limited the limited time that we have. In this life is the biggest motivation. 
What are you most grateful for? Time, which is related to the previous question. When I say father, Dairy Queen. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when I met him, I did I tell you about this? Like, uh, he's diff. Uh, he looks like you, but he is different. I said, Yeah, I love money, and he loves books. I <laughs> said. What a statement, Yanni. It was so random and very straightforward, Yanni. Amazing. He tells me you should have bought business books instead of all this stuff. Yeah. Why these books, Yanni? Yeah, we, yeah. could, we could make some serious money if you did. So, scholars? Ed Albani. And? Um, I love Ibn Hazm. Even though, of course, like everyone disagrees with some things here and there, even with Ed Albani. But I love Ed Albani, Ibn Hazm, Imam Ahmed, Al Bukhari. The scholars of uh, hadith in general, Ali bin Madini, Dara Qutni, uh, Abu Hatim al Razi, of course. Scholars of hadith. Uh, how about self help industry, which uh, is like going crazy? I don't know. I don't know anything about self help. I don't know anything about self help. Ah. Yeah. Because this how about you, you? You advise me, Akhi. What, what should I don't one? know. Like, what would you so suggest? much, so much, uh, even our community guys are getting into it. And uh, I think we are neglecting that we have a lot of self help books which have been uh, copied, I would say, mm. from us. Mm. It's something which, uh, which has originated from us, I would say, Annie, from our golden era. Right. Okay. But, but more than that, what happened is I think we are getting into the self help, and the majority is getting into it. and busy getting into them and they themselves are also producing like okay i i learned something now mm. i will also produce now right so everybody's becoming a guru now right 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 that was uh so at last uh, how was this interview it's wonderful Akhi. any time with you is wonderful yes well, in, in subscribe to the righteous rich guys <laughs> Thank you so much. I I think it's enough at the end. I don't need to tell anymore. Khalas, you have, know. I, I you the, know you're supposed to subscribe. What are you doing? Yes. <laughs> so this is where we end today's episode. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, we will come with a few more distinctions if I'm alive in future episodes. Thank you so much. <laughs>